Hi everyone, this is Dr. Sharna Moin and welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing good. Previously, we have showed you the arterial supply of the stomach and the venous drainage of the stomach. But in today's video, we will discuss about the mode of arterial supply of the stomach. And at the end of the video, we will also explain why the gastric ulcers tend to form more commonly on the lesser curvature and its relationship with the mode of arterial supply. And to understand that, you have to watch the full video till the end without skipping any part. I've already covered the basics of the stomach's arterial supply in a previous video, which you can check out by clicking the link on the top right corner. But I hope you all can remember the stomach is supplied by the left and right gastric arteries on the lesser curvature. The greater curvature, on the other hand, is supplied by the left and right gastropipulic arteries and the upper part of the greater curvature and the fundus of the stomach is supplied by the short gastric artery and also the back side of the stomach is supplied by the branches of the tortuous splenic artery aka the posterior gastric artery so if you can remember this then we can proceed to the mode of arterial supply here, I'm taking the help from the Essentials of Human Anatomy by A.K. Dotto, Thorax and Abdomen Portion, 9th edition. The app I'm using here is a complete anatomy and the hand-drawn illustrations are done by me, for which I have also followed again the A.K. Dotto's anatomy. So, here we can see that the arteries that are supplying the stomach actually form an arterial arcade that run along the lesser and the greater curvatures. Branches from these arcades supply the both surfaces of the stomach and the branches enter into the stomach almost at right angles to the stomach's long axis. This is what we can see in the naked eye. Now, to understand the mood of arterial supply, you have to know about the layers of the stomach as well. Histologically, stomach has four layers, from outward to inward, the serosa, the muscle layer, the submucosa, and finally, the mucosa, the innermost layer. So, these four layers. The mucosa is again subdivided into three layers we can see. On the top, we have the lining epithelium. Then we have the lamina propria. And then there is a muscular layer, the muscle of the mucosa, that is the muscularis mucosa. So, these three layers together are forming the mucosa. Here, the lining epithelium on the top is the epithelial tissue layer. Then, the lamina propria of the mucosa the submucosa and the serosa, these three layers are the connective tissue layers. You can see the blue dots here in these three layers. These dots represent the connective tissue cell nucleus. So this is the epithelial tissue and these three layers are the connective tissue layers. And also we can see there are two muscle layers, the muscularis mucosa and the original muscle layer. Okay, now we know that the epithelial tissue layer is avascular and the connective tissue layer is vascular. The connective tissue layers contain the blood vessels and the epithelial tissue gets its oxygen supply or the nutrition by diffusion from these arteries of underlying connective tissue. So here we have to draw the arteries up to the lamina propria and we have to keep it in mind while drawing that the arteries will never ever penetrate the overlying epithelial tissue. So you have to draw the blood vessels reaching up to the connective tissue. The branches of the arterial arcades along the lesser and greater curvatures will penetrate the serosa at first, then it will go deeper to the muscle layer, then the submucosa, and finally they will reach up to the mucosa of the stomach. Now, while passing through these layers, these arterials will form the uh, arterial plexuses in different layers. At first, the subserous plexus in the serous layer. Then the branches from these plexus will enter into the next muscle layer and in the muscle layer they will form the intramuscular plexus. Then the branches from these plexus enter into the next layer and form the submucous plexus in the submucosa. So this is a submucosal plexus you can see and you can also see that this plexus is again sending the mucosal arteries to the mucosa. So these are the mucosal arteries. These arteries pierce, um, pierce, pierce. Okay, anyways, these arteries pierce the muscularis mucosa, communicate with each other, and break into the leashes of capillaries. 
So these are the capillaries and the veins arise from here and then after passing through all these layers again they join the gastric veins. So these are the corresponding veins of these arteries. Here the arteries of submucosal plexus are associated with the corresponding veins. However, this is visible that the submucosal plexus is absent along the lesser curvature of the stomach. Oh, I forgot to mention that the left side is representing the lesser curvature of the stomach and this is the rest of the stomach. So we have to compare these two portions. So this is visible that submucosal plexus is absent along the lesser curvature of the stomach. As I've said that um, we have to imagine that this is the lesser curvature. This portion is the lesser curvature of the stomach. Okay, so we can see that this submucosal plexus here, this is absent in the lesser curvature. But there is mucosal vessels. The long slender mucosal vessels, we can see that they arise directly from the main arterial feeders, piercing the stomach's muscular layer obliquely. And then they reach the mucosa where they form the mucosal plexus and then drain back into the veins. So here there is no submucosal plexus, there is only one long artery that arises directly from this main artery and then they reach directly to the mucosa. Now the occlusion of these long mucosal vessels may produce ischemia in this area, I mean on the lesser curvature. And if ischemia happens, I mean when the blood flow is compromised, I mean reduced in this area, then the tissue of this area is damaged due to lack of blood supply and become weakened. So the stomach acid can erode the underlying tissues easily and forms a localized lesion. It is caused by the breakdown of the tissue of this area by the acid. This lesion is called the ulcer. This is why the gastric ulcer is more prone to develop on the lesser curvature than any other area of the stomach. Another interesting feature is the presence of the arteriovenous anastomosis in the submucous coat. These anastomotic channels, I mean the arteriovenous anastomosis, they, they allow the blood to bypass the capillaries and flow directly from the arteries to the veins. While this mechanism can be useful, the case is different in case of persistent hyperacidity, I mean in case of persistent hyperchlorhydria. In case of persistent hyperchlorhydria, these channels dilate. So blood is shunted into the veins without even reaching the capillary system. As a result, the surface epithelium becomes ischemic due to lack of capillary blood flow in this area and becomes starved of oxygen, leading to ischemic damage. Combined with the stomach's acidic environment, the damaged tissue is highly susceptible to acidic digestion, further increasing the risk of ulcers, I mean the gastric ulcers. This is an interesting fact. So here in this video, I have described the mode of arterial supply of the stomach and also I've explained why the gastric ulcer is more common in the lesser curvature than any other area of the stomach. And I tried to show you how the artery of anastomosis may play a role in ulcer formation in case of persistent hyperacidity. And you'll find all this information in A.K. Dotto's Essential of Human Anatomy, Thorax and Abdomen portion. So, finally, shush. This is the end of this video. If you found this video helpful, then do not forget to like, share and subscribe my channel and help me to grow. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. Till then, take care and goodbye.